All right, I think everything here is good to go. Um, if there's anybody kind of in the feed right now, can you let me know, can you hear me all right? Can you see me all right? Is there any issues on the back end? Um, oh, apparently I'm getting messages, so somebody's telling me something. Okay, cool. You can see me, you can hear me, perfect. Uh, I'm going to turn down the volume on that and get going. So, um, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Matt LaRue. I'm one of the barbers at the Brook Barbershop. And I was asked by Max Ottawa today to come here, give you guys some tips and tricks on how to kind of trim, cut, maintain your hair at home. Um, you know, there's plenty of stress going on right now. And so hopefully this will just help alleviate a little bit of that. Plus, you know, just feels good to feel like you look good. So, so hopefully we can do that today. Um, just to quickly take everybody through kind of what my plan is for this session. Um, first, I'm going to start off by showing you um, just a few different tools. Um, obviously, I have a lot of hair cutting tools, but um, kind of the things that you can use from around the house that might work and some things that I would really uh, encourage you to kind of shy away from. Uh, and then maybe just a quick thing about how to maintain those tools because a lot of the stuff that uh, we have lying around the house isn't really meant for long-term use for full haircuts, like beard trimmers, that kind of a thing. So a few ideas there. Um, then I'm going to pull a mannequin out and I'm going to show you some stuff for if you're cutting your own hair. Uh, so kind of some overview, uh, some specific stuff, and then I'm going to go a little bit deeper after that. But the, the kind of more advanced techniques are gonna be with um, having some assistance in mind. So if you're currently self-isolating with family or your partner or roommate or whomever, so there's gonna be some stuff there for both. So if you're completely by yourself or if you've got uh, some helping hands as well. So um, I guess we can kind of get into the tool side of things. So I'll show you first and foremost, some folks may have a clipper like this at home. Uh, most people I know actually have a clipper like this, not for their own hair, but because they use it for their pet's hair. That's fine. They're basically the exact same tool. You obviously are probably going to want to sterilize it a little bit uh, before using it on your own hair. Um, so any kind of brush uh, or a cloth or whatever, just to get some of those loose hairs out. Um, you could probably use any disinfectant on these, really. Nothing too sudsy or soapy. Um, but, you know, you're just gonna, you're gonna wanna clean it off. And definitely make sure that you dry it out as well because a lot of these metals, um, they aren't actually stainless steel, and so they rust very easily. Um, so you may have something like this in your home. That's what I'm gonna be using today. But probably more people are gonna have something along the lines of this thing. Um, this is actually my partner's beard trimmer. They're not ideal, um, but they'll do in a pinch. Like, they're not bad, they're not great, but, you know, we kind of have to temper our expectations a little bit given the current situation. So something like this is fine. Um, you're going to want to look for something that has some guards on it, or maybe like, uh, I think this has kind of like a little sliding guard, so you can adjust the length. Um, and the one thing I'd really caution people with these guys is, like I was saying before, they're not really intended to do a full head of hair. They're usually just for cleaning up your beard, maybe trimming an outline. Uh, and they can get really, really hot really fast. So if you are cutting your hair with one of these guys and it feels like it's warming up, just turn it off, give it a few minutes, let it cool down. Uh, Cause I have seen these things have a complete meltdown. What can happen is because a lot of the parts on the inside are actually made out of plastic and not metal, when they get hot, that those plastic pieces can soften up and break. So like your gears are breaking, things like that. So you can basically melt one of these down if you go, to, you know, really hard for a long time so just respect the tool um it also really helps uh most of these most clippers in general will, when you buy them will have uh like a little container of oil that comes with it and i find that's the one thing kind of home users tend to neglect the most is actually oiling their clippers and that 
goes a very, very long way for preserving the life of it because, you know, there's friction in between those blades, which again is making a lot of heat. It can damage the blades over time, where it's just a few drops of oil on the little metal blade there uh, will save you a lot of heartache in the, in the long run. Um, also gonna need a comb. Uh, a lot of times when we're doing, uh, you know, kind of self haircuts, I see a lot of people like matting their hair around and tussling it around and stuff like that. A comb is going to make your life a lot easier. Um, and it's going to be kind of necessary for some of the more advanced stuff that I'm going to be showing you later on. Um, so any comb will do. I have, I'm going to be using a different one when I do the, the demonstrations just because that's what I'm used to working with. But I mean, it's just your basic comb. A lot of folks are going to have these. Uh, a hairbrush isn't really going to do it. They're too broad. They're too loose. Like this is really about giving you control over your hair. So that's very helpful. Now, I debated whether or not I would get into doing any scissor cutting today. Um, and a big reason for that is, um, full disclosure, one of my favorite things to do is go on YouTube and watch hair cutting fail videos. Um, it's schadenfreude, it's terrible, I know, but <laughs> it still just amazes me, um, some of the things people try at home. Um, and so I didn't really want to feed into that because it is very difficult to cut your own hair with scissors and it is much easier to make a big mistake with scissors. Uh, a lot of the DIY videos out there you know, you, you see somebody on YouTube who's going to cut their own hair and they maybe shave the sides a little bit and then they pull out a pair of scissors and then in the next cut they have this perfect flawless haircut and it doesn't quite work that way. But I did decide I'll, I'll show a few scissor techniques with some very big caveats. Um, and also kind of a try at your own peril. Truthfully, I think this is the best time to try it because for most of us, we're not going out anyway. And worst case scenario, if you're having a meeting on Zoom or whatever, you can kind of, if you've got a little something bad going on there, you can kind of hide it up. But my first broad statement is going to be, if you are going to try cutting your hair at home with scissors, please, please, please do not use something like these, your usual home crafting scissors, whatever. And I know that's frustrating because that's probably what most people are going to have. The tricky thing here is that um, this, in, in terms of hair cutting, is a big, clumsy, blunt object. You don't have a lot of dexterity with your fingers in them. Um, they're very stiff to open and close. Uh, they're just, they're not great. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can try it, but it's just, please, please, please don't. Um, now, I know a lot of people, though, might have something a little bit closer to these. Now these look a little bit more like professional scissors, but all these actually are are like a grooming scissor. Like I actually had these before I even became a barber and they were for trimming hairs around my beard, nipping off the occasional nose hair, that type of thing. Something like this, if you wanted to try cutting hair with, much, much, much better. You know, you've, you've got a little bit more dexterity with your fingers, the blades are gonna be a lot sharper, more precise. Um, so go ahead with this. If you really want to try the kitchen scissors, give it a whirl, but I just, I can't make any promises for how that's going to turn out or how that's going to look. Um, feel free, by the way, if I'm kind of flying through things or speaking too fast or whatever, throw a post or a, a comment up, let me know. Um, okay, so now that we're through all the tools and such, also water have some water on hand. Uh, I was walking my dog the other day and noticed uh, a neighborhood or a guy in my neighborhood sitting on his back deck cutting his hair, which cool, you don't want the hair in your house, but he didn't have a mirror. And like, <laughs> to me, it's kind of important that you be able to see what you're doing. Um, so please, please, please use a mirror. Um, you know, hair sucks, it gets everywhere, but you can sweep it up, you can vacuum, use a mirror so you can actually see what you're doing, because you're gonna, you're gonna regret it if you don't. Uh, and yeah, a little bit of water will help uh, if you're gonna be cutting the top of your hair. Um, so, with all of that said, let me slide this chair out of the way, and I'm gonna get my lovely model in here. Alright, she's a little terrifying, so I apologize. 
I get all of my mannequin heads secondhand from uh, students because a lot of styling students, they don't ever cut them this short. So once they're done with it, I can just take it and do whatever I want with it. Um, but, you know, sometimes they have applied some lovely makeup or some facial tattoos. So that's a little bit out of my control. Um, let's see. Brands I recommend for tools. That's a really good question. Um, Wall is a very good brand, W-H-A-L. Um, there are different levels of wall tools because they do supply a lot of tools to like the home market. Again, they do pet tools, they do personal care tools, and then they do like the higher end stuff for a salon. So, you know, if you were looking for some good tools like maybe you're, you're shopping on Amazon or something like that, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, go wrong by getting wall uh, and they'll have a wide range of prices and things like that for you to pick from. Um, there's another company that I really like. That's actually what made this clipper here. This is called Andis, A-N-D-I-S. Um, fantastic tools. They're, the reason I like these tools is this is just like pure metal. There's no flimsy plastic parts on it, so they don't, break down very easily and when they do break down I can fix them pretty quickly but even amongst barbers these aren't the most popular choice because they're all metal they're very heavy um, so if you're doing it yourself yeah you're probably gonna want something that's a little bit more lightweight um, because you're gonna have to coordinate doing it around yourself and things like that so yeah I would I would check a wall um, in terms of scissors like if you were looking to pick up something like this these are actually by a company called Tweezer Man. I have no idea if Tweezer is a brand or what. Um, so I would just put in, you know, search for hairstyling scissors. Don't break the bank unless you're you're really motivated to get started. And maybe this is think, something you're thinking about doing even after quarantine ends, um, because actual styling shears can go for anywhere like a cheaper pair would be like $75 and I know I've looked at pairs upwards of $600 to $700 so you know if you're just starting out I wouldn't break the bank. Uh, just keeping an eye see if there's any other questions. Okay so like I said I'm gonna start with some really basic you're home by yourself you're shaggy you're not feeling great you just want to tidy up a little bit. Um, and the one thing I would I would kind of want to convey to everybody, we see this at the at the barber shop all the time. You know, somebody will come flying in, their hair maybe looks like this, they haven't had it cut in a long time, it's big, it's shaggy, it's out of control. And they say, Oh, my hair's so long, it's driving me crazy. Just cut it all off, just cut it all off, get rid of it. And a lot of times we actually try we we're kind of encouraging people to take it a little bit slower. We'll say, like, you know what, let's just take a bit off the sides and then see what we're working with. And a big reason for that is like, as soon as you take out a lot of this bulk around the sides and blend it in even just a little bit into the top, it's like 80% better. It looks clean, it looks tidy, it looks well kept, especially I'm gonna show you quickly how to do an outline. Um, so, you know, if you're just cutting your hair at home, I would encourage you just start there. If you just wanna take this stuff out, and not worry so much about the top because that's the stuff that's more difficult to do yourself. I think that's fine, and I think it'll it'll make a pretty big improvement right off the bat. Um, so, where did I put my clipper? Now, in terms of how long or short to go on the sides. Um, that can be a little bit tricky because depending on the clipper that you're using, they often use the numbered scale. It's usually one to eight. And each one of those numbers typically correlates to a length. So like a four is a half an inch. Uh, two is a quarter of an inch. Uh, the tricky thing can be depending on where your clippers are from or how they're made or whatever, that's not always an exact science. Sometimes there's different differences in measurement because your tool was made in Europe as opposed to being made in the States. Um, sometimes they're just, you know, a lower quality clipper. And so the numbers don't add up with the little beard trimmers like this. I know the first time I had one, I 
adjusted it to a number two on the little dial that it had, thinking like, oh, my barber always uses a number two. And then I went and cut my beard, and it was 10 times shorter than I expected it to be. I'm not really sure why that was, but just a word of caution that when you're trying to decide a length to go on the back and sides, I would start longer than you think you're going to want it. So just because you've got plenty of time in your hands, so give it a go. You can always go shorter. Going longer, that's the challenge, right? Um, what I'm going to do today, I'm actually using a number four, which is a half an inch. That's actually a little bit long. Like by the standards of what we see a lot in the shop, most people want to go down to a number two for the back and sides because it's nice and tidy. But on these mannequins, their hair is actually pretty thin compared to a human being. So if I cut it down to a two, it's basically going to disappear. Like all you're going to see is the scalp through it and stuff like that. And then when I'm showing you blending techniques later on, it's going to be harder to see that because it's so short. So on this mannequin today, I'm going to start off with a number four. We'll take a look, see, see how that feels and kind of go from there. Uh, just drink water. Now, if you are not doing this on yourself, but you're actually cutting somebody else's hair, really good to get in the habit of having a comb in one hand and a clipper in the other. Again, it just gives you a lot more control while you're kind of moving stuff around. Um, I'm going to put my comb away. I'm going to try the best to simulate a home haircut experience. Now, the one thing that the one mistake, I guess I'll say, that I see people make the most when they're cutting their hair at home, again, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people doing this, is, you know, they start at the sides, which is fine, and then they kind of follow the shape of their head, which it, it's, it feels like it how, how you should do it, but it's, it's not great. Because um, what can happen is you're kind of following your head along, but then you've actually ended up going too high and now you've got all this short stuff up here that's not going to blend into the top very well. So what you ideally want to do is put the flat part of this guard against your head and then follow the flat of your head straight up. Okay. So once your head starts to curve, you're not going to follow that. You're just going to keep going straight up. So think, and I'll, I'll use my comb here as an example. Think if you had a ruler or something like that placed against your head follow that line straight, straight up. And that's going to leave you a little bit of stuff up here that you can then come in and blend. And some, oftentimes it doesn't even need to be blended because it just transitioned naturally into the top here. So this could be really loud. I've never tried it on the camera before. So hopefully it doesn't blow out your speakers. It's like, it's impossible for me to do this now without holding a comb in this hand. So bear with me. Again, I'm just going to start here and I'm following that line straight up. The other thing, if you're using like a beard trimmer or kind of one of those lower end um, hair clippers at home, they're often not as powerful or as fast as a, a professional clipper. So you might want to be careful when you're starting that you don't turn it on and then dig right into your hair because it might actually not cut your hair fast enough for that. And now you're just getting a lot of hair tangled and you're kind of pulling hair out as you're going. So no rush, nice and slow. Now, if you are doing this by yourself, the back is certainly going to be a challenge. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of gymnastics on your part, especially because the backs of our heads are really curvy. So kind of identifying like where you want to stop following and kind of, you know, bringing it up. Um, my advice would to just, my advice would be to just, again, start slow. Um, you know, kind of feel your way through it and definitely, if you are doing this in front of the mirror, either having a second mirror or your cell phone or something so that you can kind of look at the back of your head, it's much better to have a look at the back of your head and decide, oh, I need to bring this up a little bit higher than to accidentally cut your hair way too far up the back. So Let's 
see even my clipper, like it's got to kind of chew through this a little bit. So it's not getting snagged per se, but it's not passing through as smoothly as we would like. And if this were actually a living model, it might kind of tug on their hair a little bit. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Back and sides, pretty straightforward. Um, truthfully, probably could go a little bit shorter on this mannequin. Um, but I can kind of show you. I don't know how well it's going to come up on the camera there. Doesn't look great on the camera, but trust me when I say, like, in person, this is actually already fairly well blended. This stuff is always going to look a lot thinner just because it's crappy mannequin hair. But on a normal person, <laughs> this would be pretty, pretty... Uh, opaque still and then it just blends in really nicely with what's on the top you know it's hard to do, do yourself but if you did notice some really long kind of scraggly pieces that you weren't too keen on that's when you could come through with some scissors and try and kind of carefully blend them out uh, which is something I will show you in a little bit when I'm showing the assisted haircut but it's a very good start and so the next step that I would follow if I was cutting my hair by myself at home is lining everything up. Uh, we tend to overlook that a little bit because, you know, we take clippers to our hair at home, everything's shorter. We're like, okay, great, my hair's short, I got a haircut. Uh, but if you come in afterwards and just use the clippers and clean up these long guys that are still hanging out along, I guess, the border of your hairline, same thing, it just kind of steps your haircut up a little bit more. It makes it look cleaner. Um, even with a buzz cut, coming through and lining it up afterwards is going to make it look just that much better. Um, it's relatively easy to do by yourself if you're at home looking in a mirror because we're just going to go up and over the ears. The challenging part would be doing your neckline in the back here. I probably wouldn't recommend it if you're by yourself because even if you're doing the whole mirror technique, kind of touching it up in the back is going to be awkward, especially because using mirrors, everything's going to be reversed. So you're going to move your hand one way, expecting it to go the direction you want it to go in, but in the mirror, you're going to see it going the other way. That gets very disorienting. So lining up the back by yourself, maybe not a great idea, but certainly we can do the sides and around the ears, and that makes a really, really big difference. So if you're using this kind of a clipper and you've got a guard on it, this is where I would go to what we call open. So that's just Clipper blade, no guard, open. And again, take your time with it because no rush. We want to get it right the first time. And now that this is open, if you were to press this against, you know, say the side of your head or whatever, you're going straight down. That's right, right to skin. So we don't want any mishaps with this. Sideburns, what I usually recommend is we kind of use the ear as a guide. So for anybody who has a lot of piercings or knows people with lots of piercings, you're probably familiar with it. what the tragus is. It's this little kind of fleshy, bumpy guy here. So rule of thumb for me personally, I look at somebody's tragus. I kind of look at the top of the bump, and then I imagine a line going from here, and that's where I'll set their sideburns. It's not a bad place to start. And then, you know, you can look at that and decide if you want to move upper or, you know, higher or lower. I know some folks who want to go from the top of the ear right across, which to me is pretty drastic, but you know, live your truth. So 
she doesn't really have a tragus per se, so I'm just gonna kind of look here. Another thing to be aware of, if you're using a beard trimmer at home to do this, um, because of how far the teeth on the blades are spaced out, um, like this clipper has way more teeth than a home clipper is gonna have. So because they're spaced out further at on the cheaper ones, it's actually easier to burn yourself with them or to cut yourself with it. So when you're doing stuff like this, when you're using this blade directly against your skin, for the, the um, beard trimmers, kind of lower end clippers, just be very, very gentle. Try not to like push really hard because you could burn your skin a little bit. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not comfortable. So I'm just kind of going from her tragus, giving it a nice straight line. And then all I'm really gonna do is follow the shape of the model's ear up and over. Uh, this model doesn't have actual ears, but for a person, I would just kind of fold this over. You can kind of see where your hairline stops and you're just gonna follow that line. Now again, if you're doing this by yourself, you should be able to get kind of right up and over. This part is gonna be challenging to do by yourself and it's not gonna look terrible if you don't do it, but I'll show you a comparison. This is the side that we did do and this is the side that we didn't, right? So again, just gonna make everything look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more tidy. Um, now, if you're doing this totally by yourself, you may decide, you know what, the sides are nice and short, the long still drive me crazy, the stuff on top is driving me crazy. Um, so I'm just gonna go for broke. I'm gonna give myself a buzz cut. I got lots of time to grow it back. Totally cool. I'm not gonna buzz uh, this mannequin because I need it for a few more things. But the only real thing that you need to know for continuing on into a buzz cut is that a lot of times we'll just kind of go back you know, we'll, we'll start from the forehead and work our way back and then call it a day. Look short. It's a buzz cut. If you want it to look nice and clean and even, then what I would suggest is like start from the forehead, clip all this back, then start from the back, clip it all forward. You can go from one side to the other, the side over. Just be really nice and thorough because especially when you're doing it yourself, it's easy to miss kind of a long strip of hair that doesn't look great. But also what can happen with some clippers is, in barbering school we called it furrows, but some clippers will almost leave like, like a ripply texture in your hair if you haven't gone over it consistently enough. So from a front on perspective, it might look perfect, it's short hair, you know, whatever, it's a buzz cut. Um, but it might have some kind of weird texture patterny stuff going on. So if you are gonna continue on to do a buzz cut, just like I said, nice and thorough, take your time, um, rinse off. You might even notice the day after when you've had a shower, rinse everything out, but you've got a few errant hairs sticking out. So you can just come go over those again. Um, this is probably when I'm gonna start switching into some stuff that you're, you're gonna need a second set of hands for. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions that they wanna put out right now for self haircuts. I'm also gonna do questions at the end of everything. So feel free to post anything now or I can come back later and, and check it out. Actually, I see that people have been posting stuff and I haven't been scrolling down. Let's take a look here. There we go, okay, perfect. <laughs> if you guys could just see how convoluted my current setup was to get this going. So now I'm gonna be moving into some stuff that you're gonna need a second set of hands for, um, or at least it'll be preferable. So if we, there is a little bit of, you know, kind of a line here where this longer hair is falling down over the shorter stuff. It blends pretty well. It's not a bad blend. But if you have an extra set of hands, you wanna step it up a little bit, blend this through a little bit more. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, because I'm assuming most people won't have the kind of scissors that you would want to use. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we call it clipper over comb. So it's a technique you can use for blending things with a clipper 
but it gives you more control than just taking a clipper and digging into it. Um, let's have a look here. <laughs> now what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna cut this side here just a little bit shorter because um, I'm not sure how well kind of this blend line is coming through on the screen there. Um, so I'm gonna cut a little bit shorter just to make a higher contrast so hopefully you can see it better. But you can do this with any length of hair. So this is currently a number four, which is half an inch. I'm just taking it down to a number three. And I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna do the side of the head that I'm kind of demonstrating on. Same thing, I'm coming in. Just going straight up. Okay, yeah, so you can see there's a more pronounced line there now. So clip rubber comb is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be basically making our own guard with our comb and then using the clipper to take away any excess hair. Um, a lot of people get a little stressed out about clipper over comb. I know some barbers who don't even use it. They prefer scissor over comb because they feel like they have more control. I think this is better for the kind of tools that you're going to have at home. I'm also a clipper over comb barber, so I just... I think it's easy, but I'll leave that to you to decide, I guess. And because you're going to be determining the length of hair you're cutting with your comb, the guard that you have on your clipper doesn't matter as much. The only caveat I'll put to that is, like, if I were cutting this person in the shop, I would probably just have an open guard, figure out how much hair I want to cut, and take it off. But since you're doing it at home, and it might be your first time, it might not be bad to start clipper over comb with a guard on your clipper. So, you know, if we know that this is a number three here, you could put like a number two or number one on your guard just to give you a little bit more wiggle room so that if you do have a, a misstep, it's not quite as bad as it might be if, if you had an open clipper. So I'm going to put a number one on here for now. So what we're going to do here, kind of the same idea, the same motion that we were doing with the clipper, we're going to take our comb and just run it up the side of our model's head. And eventually we're going to catch that longer stuff in the comb. And this will be really good even if you've missed a spot or there's some long stuff hiding in the side here, it's going to show up because you're going to see it sticking out of your comb. And I guess important to note, you don't want to put this comb directly against the person's scalp when you're combing up. You're kind of following the length of this shorter hair on the side here. So you're kind of going over it until you pick up that shorter stuff. Hopefully that kind of shows up in the video. You can see there, I caught all that long stuff on the side there. So what you're gonna do, once you've kind of got all of that longer stuff in your comb, you're literally you can take your clipper, and run it. You don't want to push too hard because you, what you want to avoid doing is pushing in and now pushing everything in. So this hand shouldn't be moving at all. And you're going to come through and just cut out that longer stuff there. And so what that's doing is just marrying these two lengths together better. So now you have kind of an in-between length from, you know, this long stuff on the top and the short stuff on the sides. Now, something I should probably mention, I do it as a reflex now, but while you're doing this, a good comb is like play with the hair, comb it in the direction that it normally falls, comb it back, you know, play around with it. Because sometimes the little spots that aren't blended very well aren't going to show up until we've kind of moved it around a little bit and seen how it's sitting and things like that. Um, 
everybody's hair has a different growth pattern. It only sits in a different way. So, you know, just don't be afraid to move it around and check and see how things are shaping up. You might notice, okay, this stuff looks really great, but I've got some extra here that I can afford to take out, which is actually true. So I'm going to do that now. And we're going to do the same thing in the back here as well. Kind of harder to see. So all of this extra stuff, this is actually a good time I can show folks here. So same idea. Basically, you're going to pick a spot from maybe not the occipital bone. It can be on different places. But basically, the furthest out that somebody's head is in the back hopefully that makes sense um that's where you're going to start and then you're going to come up from that spot and that's where you're going to start blending in there so i go from here up take all this extra stuff Now, I guess I might as well show folks, again, the caveat being, um, try this if you have appropriate scissors to do so. But if you want to, you could also do this scissor over comb. So that's when you would have your scissors. And it's the exact same thing. You're just going to follow up, catch any of that long stuff, and then come in and snip it out. It's always very strange for me. In barbering school, we don't use these kinds of mannequins. We just do everything on a live person. It's kind of a crapshoot for the people who come in. You get a free haircut, but who knows how it'll turn out kind of thing. So it's always very strange for me cutting these mannequins because their hair feels different. They're just hard and inflexible, and it's, it's weird. <laughs> So, again, I'm never sure how well this is kind of coming through on the camera. Maybe I'll take her off. And... So if you can kind of see here, it's actually fairly well blended. We didn't have to do a lot. Again, ignore, you know, how short all this stuff looks. That's just because these mannequins have very thin hair. But So that's kind of what you're going for. Um, like I said, start small. You can always take more. You can't put it back on, basically. So... That's what I would recommend for blending. Now, I'm going to show you um, a quick, quick and dirty, how to take length out of the top. Um, again, this comes with a caveat. If you're using home scissors at your own risk. Uh, and what we're going to do is what we call a traveling guide. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. One other thing I could show you super quick, if you want to get fancy with it, is, okay, this is all nice and blended, but a lot of people right now are rocking what we call the side part, so just bringing their hair over to the side here. And there's two kinds of side part. There's the drastic and blended. And a drastic side part is what you see when basically this is all super short up to the line where it's parted. That's something you could do at home as well with caution. So I'll show you that quickly. The one tool I don't have at home is a spray bottle. So that's kind of frustrating, but um, basically you are gonna wanna move 
all of your hair over to the side that you're parting it to. Now I'm using water on this mannequin just because it'll make the hair behave a little bit better for me the way I want. You could wet the top of your hair before you're doing a side part. Um, the one thing you really want to be sure of is that the side is still dry. Cutting wet hair is not good for clippers. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. But basically, let's bring this person over a little bit. What we're going to want to do, find your, I mean, if you have a side part now, you should probably know where your part line is. So you're going to want to find your part line. Make sure everything is nice and beautifully parted. It's not perfect, but do the job. So again, I'll bring that down a little bit so you can kind of see where the part is. And then you basically, this stuff is currently blended, so it's not the same length throughout. But if you wanted to give it a drastic side part, you would take your clipper and just take it right up to the part line. So again, go nice and slow, because if you accidentally blow past your part line, you've just taken out long hair that you wanted to keep. super short that's now like a one on the sides but now you can kind of keep your your drastic side part going so I don't know if that's helpful at all but a lot of people part their hair so that's one way of doing it so that everything is nice and blended and even now for the stuff on top um, I'm gonna show you the traveling guide and this you are definitely going to want to wear wet the top of your hair for again mind me i don't have a spray bottle with me um two reasons you wet the hair one is just the fact that dry hair when you cut it flies everywhere and it's a big mess and it's in your mouth and it's gross the other one being that when it's wet it just gives us more control over the hair um so you can Kind of move it around in the directions that you need it to go. Kind of stick it over to one side if you need to work back here, that type of thing. And because these mannequins are real human hair, but it's all dry and gross and dead, you basically need to dunk them in a bucket to actually get the hair as wet as you need it. You don't want to be, when you're wetting your model's hair, you don't want it to be necessarily dripping. If it is, that's not the end of the world. You can just tap it with a towel and dry it out again. But you want it to be pretty wet. Okay. So, what we're going to do for a traveling guide, basically you're going to think of the head in sections. So think of small little strips traveling along the head from the forehead to the back here. And we're just gonna kind of go along and isolate those strips. So you're gonna kind of scoop it up with your comb. You don't want a ton. Again, it's better to take smaller pieces. I would say actually even take smaller than what I'm doing. I'm just used to it. There you can kind of see where I'm going with. Um, you know, and everybody's had this experience where this is where your barber or stylist kind of shows you like, okay, do you want to take this much? Do you want to take this much? That kind of a thing. So we're going to give this model a pretty healthy trim. So, you know, once you've kind of determined, okay, I want to take that much off the top, you're literally just coming through with your scissors, very, very gently cutting all that extra hair out. Um, kind of goes without saying, it's very easy to cut yourself while doing this. So take your time. It's going to be a lot easier 
to cut yourself with big crappy scissors. Yet another reason to avoid them. So now what we've done, I shouldn't have let that go. So now what we've done, we so hang on to that hair you've just cut. Now you've got your first guide. So this is the length we want. So we're gonna take our comb again, scoop up the hair we just caught, and then scoop up some of the hair behind it. Now it's not, it's not gonna come through on the camera very well, but now I've got some of the hair that I cut before and some of this longer hair in my fingers. And from my perspective, I can see where all these shorter hairs are. So those shorter hairs are gonna act as my guide. So now I can kind of adjust it and just cut everything else to match that shorter hair. And you're just gonna keep doing that. Just keep picking up a little bit more and cutting it to match the rest. Now, again, I tend to take really massive chunks of hair because, you know, on a busy day, I can cut upwards of 15 people's hair a day. So, you know, I'm kind of, it's a lot of muscle memory and stuff like that for me. But just start with nice, small, manageable chunks. And I would say when you're doing these little sections, these little sideways sections, do three strips maybe even four along the top of the head. So really tiny along the side, side, you know, side, that type of thing. And kind of the same thing. So now I'm moving over and I've got my short stuff. Polly, sorry, my dog's being a jerk. So you can see I've got the short stuff that I cut previously and this is the longer part of my next segment. So real easy, just follow that line and cut that. Go be there. The garbage men are here and my dog Polly is not impressed. And I realize dead air is kind of boring, so I'm going to try and get this done relatively quickly so you're not just sitting watching me cut hair. Same thing. So now I'm kind of at an angle because I've reached the side of the head. But you can see in the section that I'm taking, hopefully, it's really hard to see, so there's shorter stuff here that's already been cut, and then this longer stuff on the end. So that's how I know I've got to come through and take this stuff out. And the nice thing too is, you know, the style right now for a lot of people is to have very textured hair on top. So while we want this to be all even, the irony is a lot of times in the barbershop, we cut the top of people's hair and you know we cut it we cut it again make sure everything's nice and even and then we come through with thinning chairs and razors and all kinds of stuff to chunk it up and make it uneven anyway so you know you want it to all be the same length but if it's your first time cutting hair it's not going to be perfect so enjoy the freedom from perfection <laughs> you know just have fun with it just let it be its thing now the side here if we were doing a side part we don't have to worry too much about blending it because a lot of side parts are disconnected so you have that longer hair that sits over top of the shorter hair but if this if we hadn't side parted it if you just want kind of like straight average haircut same thing you're going to come on the side here pick up a little section and i don't know if you can see there there's just that little chunk there so on this side i have the short hair that the clipper cut and on this side i have the short hair that the scissors cut we're just going to take out that stuff in the middle and that'll give us a pretty good blend between the long stuff on the top and the short stuff on the sides. I'm just following that all the way to the back here and then you're going to do the same thing in the back. Here, let's flip them this way. It's the same thing. You're going to have a little bit of a ridge here along the crown. You're just going to come through.
scoop up that long stuff. You can see here's the short stuff that I cut on the top. Here's where the clipper ended. Here's the long stuff in between. Another important note, I probably should have said earlier, when you're sectioning hair to cut it, you want to pull it straight out from where it's growing. So, you know, if I have a section up here, let's say on the very top of the head, but instead of pulling it straight up, I pull it back towards me. When I cut it, the hair that was growing closer to the front is going to be longer than the hair that is growing closer to me because I've done what's called over direction. So basically the hair closer at the front had further to travel to get into my scissors than the stuff that's closer to me. So now there's a size discrepancy. So when you're sectioning and you're lifting stuff up, always pull it directly out from where it's growing, directly up. And that counts on the back here too. So this hair, if I, you know, if I section this and pull it straight up, it's going to be wonky because I'm over directing. So what I have to do is section it and pull it out this way from the direction that it's growing and then cut that long stuff. And then when you finish that stuff, you can kind of take a look around, see how everything's blending. You know, if you see a little chunk, you can just kind of gingerly scissor over comb it. Take the little pieces out. Now, what I was just talking about with over directing hair, the only, well, not the only time in this, circumstance when you're cutting somebody's hair, the only time you're really going to want to over direct it is for their bangs. Because right now when I first started cutting, I lifted this straight up in the air, you know, to show the model, okay, here's how much length I want to take out, you know, go, no go, that kind of a thing. But your bangs don't grow straight up. They actually grow kind of out on the angle because your, your head is curving. So what we've done now actually, because I cut it that way, their bangs are actually a little bit longer than everything else. And so if I come through from this angle and pull their bangs out in the direction they're growing, you can see this shorter stuff is the length that all the hair on the top of the head is going to be, but then all that longer stuff is sticking out. And that's because I over-directed it. I directed it the wrong way. So once you're done your cut, I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world because it will blend in. So if you don't, if you're, nervous about cutting it at the angle or whatever, it should look fine, but your client will still have longer bangs. Um, and again, if you're side parting it, maybe that's not a problem because you like to have a little bit of extra hair in the front that you can style, work with, whatever. But that being said, I know bangs are probably the one thing that are driving people the most crazy as they get long because now they're in your face. If you have kids at home, you know, your, your kids' hair is in their face all the time. So, like I said, to get rid of that extra bang length, same thing, we're gonna take a little section, but we're gonna direct it out from the way it's growing. So I'll show you that. And we're just gonna cut it so that it matches everything on the top of the head. Now, basically, that's that. That's a traveling guide. So what I've done, this, this model now has even length hair all over the top of their head, blended on this side, cut short on this side, whatever. Um, if you are really picky and you're really concerned about everything being even, you can do the same process, but from the side. So you're going to start on the side, take a little section and lift the hair. And what you're going to notice hard to see because it's getting pretty short now but you'll see little peaks and valleys so you'll have some spots where the hair is really long or well not really long but longer some spots where it's shorter and longer and shorter and that's just because you know we've pulled 
chunks of hair, right? Like, so you can come through now going sideways and just cut those so that they're even. Now this is really, really nitpicky stuff. Um, depending on the length of your hair, if you, if you don't go through and cross check, you might notice that your hair has got a little bit of kind of like a wavy pattern to it. But again, most people want textured hair anyway. And, you know, for me, it's just a habit to come through and kind of cross check and make sure everything is even. But nine times out of 10, if I'm cutting somebody's hair at the shop, I'm going through to all this work to make sure the hair is 100% even. And then before I send them out the door, I'm going to come through with thinning shears and a texturing razor and all kinds of stuff and make it shaggy and uneven anyway. So it's a little bit ridiculous. But when you've done it a thousand times, it's a hard habit to break. So I'm going to throw some product in this model's hair in a minute to show you that it's actually not a giant messy mop, which is what it looks like on the camera right now. The only thing I wanted to show super quickly as well, and it might be difficult because the, the bangs on this model aren't very long anymore. Probably the number one hair cutting fail that I see on these internet videos that I love so much is people cutting their own bangs. And here I'll use my own hair as an example because it's pretty long. What people love to do is take their hair, like let's say you just want to trim your bangs. They'd like to take their hair and they twist it up into a little ponytail and then they cut it right across there. What's going to happen, because again, you're over directing some hair, is that when all this hair falls loose, you get a flying V. Your bangs are super long here and very short right in the middle. The other thing I see a lot, you know, oftentimes it's parents who are doing DIY videos and they're cutting their own kid's hair, is combing all that hair in their bangs straight down and then just cutting straight across. That's your typical bowl cut. Doesn't look good. You look like Jim Carrey in Dumber Dumber. Like it's not great. So if you do just want to trim your bangs, it's just in your eyes, it's driving you crazy. Just take a pair of scissors and bring everything forward and just very gently come in with your scissors pointing up, not across. We're just going to take the tip of our scissors and just start cutting out little pieces and making it nice and even you know making sure we're not leaving any spots longer than others and this is a process because again i recommend go nice and slow but you can just keep snipping away at it and you will see that you know overall more hairs are getting shorter than the rest and that 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 line is going to start moving up a little bit more but by doing it this way we call it point cutting you're keeping a nice organic line here because when when you're cutting hair you know you don't want a straight hard line because that's just going to look like you've chopped your hair off we want it to look like it grew that way so just kind of point cut them until they're the length that you want now i'm going to quickly grab some hair product Irony is I haven't styled my own hair in two months, so I wasn't even sure if we had any. And again, because this is mostly cut to be a side part, I'm going to take this longer stuff on the top, bring it off to the side that I want it to go to. And I don't know how well it shows up, but again, we've got our part a hard part along the sides here. And then again, you'll probably have a bit of a disconnect here because you're going to have longer stuff up top, shorter stuff here. Ignore this side because I didn't cut it as short as this side. But all of that, when you kind of sweep it back and style it, should blend in really nicely. And you know, you've got yourself a halfway decent quarantine haircut. So I think that's pretty much everything I had planned on going over today. I'm going to move her out of the way. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask. It can be about anything. You know, it doesn't have to be just about what I showed you. If you have questions about product or 
tools or anything like that, feel free to fire away. Um, I'll just give anybody who wants to wants to um, ask a question a minute to type it in. And, and I guess I'll do the shameless plug portion of <laughs> this afternoon. Uh, so I do, I work at the Brook Barbershop, which is in Hintonburg. Uh, it is an amazing little shop. Uh, I remember when I was first talking to the owner, coincidentally, I was having um, dinner in the neighborhood and I said to my friend, hey, um, you know, the Brooks just down the street. Do you mind if I just kind of like sneak over? I just want to take a look at it. I want to go peek in through the windows. And when I was walking to it, I kind of turned the corner and there was what looks like a small stone cottage with ivy growing up the side of it. Very, very petite, only two chairs. Um, it's very cute, to be honest. Uh, and it's like, this can't be it. And then I peeked in through the windows and it's just a beautiful old shop, wood paneling, two chairs. We have a giant stuffed deer on the wall and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a fantastic place. It's a great neighborhood. So when everything is said and done, when we are free from our self isolation and we get to go and enjoy these things again, I hope that you'll come and pay me and my colleague Sky a visit. Um, and if not, that's great too. You know, some of you may decide from today on that you want to continue doing your own haircuts at home. Uh, I definitely encourage you to do that. I know a lot of people who cut their hair at home who are very, very good at it. They have great results. Um, I think if I could give you any advice, it would be to free yourself from perfection. The few first few couple times you do it, it's not going to be perfect, but it's a learning process and it's, it's a lot about developing that muscle memory and um, your coordination and things like that. So just stick with it, keep doing it. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it'll turn out great. And we're always there uh, so you can send us, send us messages on Instagram for advice or email us or whatever. We're always really open to that kind of thing. So, um, da -da 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 -da. see here. How do I fix Addie's hair? She cut a small piece of her bangs, dead center of her forehead, the usual. Should I just blend it in? Yeah. Um, I don't know how long her bangs were to begin with. Um, I don't know if she had kind of like cut bangs or if they were just blended into the sides. So all I could really suggest there is like if she has kind of straight bangs across the front and she's cut a chunk out, so now she's got a piece up here. Depending on how high that chunk goes, you know, if it's just a little bit of a notch, you could just point cut the rest of them so you get a nice even line across the front. Um, if it's like really far up, close to where her hair grows, we do see that a lot when kids come in who've cut their own hair. And it's funny because kids always zero in on the bangs. It's, it's right there, it's easy to grab. You know, it's the first thing that they wanna cut. And it's probably the worst possible spot that you could cut your hair too short because, you know, if your hairline is right down to the wood at the front there, there's only so much that we can do to make it look better. Um, so, yeah, I would say point cut it uh, to try and blend it in. Um, other than that, she might just have to be patient and wait for them to grow out, which is unfortunate, but uh, that's, that's the way she goes. She didn't have any, so I'm guessing she, then she cut her bangs straight to the wood. Uh, wear a hat. <laughs> like, uh, that's all I can really suggest, because if you've cut your bangs right up to the hairline uh, and everything else is long, there's not much you can do to blend that out, but it's not like you're going to cut the rest of them up to the bangs either. Again, I've seen people on the internet try that. It never ends well, so... Um, but yeah, having said all of that, uh, I want to thank you all for spending the afternoon with me going over some stuff. It was a lot of fun for me. It was a really great opportunity. It's the second time I've gotten to cut hair in two months, uh, I live with my partner. So fortunately, I got to cut his hair uh, just to make sure I still remembered how to do it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Max Ottawa for giving me the opportunity to come here and do this today. This is really cool. Um, and... Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link to my Instagram and the barbering, the barbershop's Instagram in the comments from this post. Um, so if you do cut your hair at home or you tr cut your, your you know, co-quarantiner's hair or whatever, 
uh, I would love to see pictures or videos. Feel free to ask questions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm really open to it and don't have a lot else going on right now anyway. So thank you very much. I hope you're all staying healthy and happy and uh, we'll see you again when this is all over.